Talk to veterans of the African and Sicilian invasions. Talk to the paratroopers who led the Allied armies into France. Many of them could tell of instances in which their own weapons were out of service or unavailable, and in order to get themselves out of a tight spot, enemy weapons were found and put to good use. This is a common thing. It has happened many times. So along with the million and one lessons the Allied soldier has to learn, there must be added at least a brief glance at the seven basic infantry weapons of the German. His standard infantry rifle, the familiar Luger pistol carried by officers, his Tommy gun, his potato masher or stick grenade, light and heavy machine guns, and his heavy mortar, the 81 millimeter. If you are familiar with the Springfield 1903 service rifle, as you may be after stripping and cleaning it for 100 inspections, you'll have very little trouble in using this standard infantry carbine 38, the Mauser. In fact, our Springfield has a modified Mauser action. Both action, magazine fed, rear sight, a leaf with an open V notch. Slides on a wrap graduated from 100 to 2,000 meters. There is no adjustment for windage. A special feature is the manner in which the sling is attached to the side of the rifle. On the end of the bolt plug is the safety, operated very much like the Springfield. Pop the piece by sliding the bolt forward and locking it into battery. Move the safety lock left, the rifle can be fired and the bolt worked. Move the lock to the right, and it is on safety with the bolt locked. With the lock upright, it is still on safety, but the bolt may be worked. Even in loading, there is a close resemblance to the U.S. rifle. If the German 7.92 millimeter or 31 caliber ammunition is available, open the bolt and press the cartridges down into the magazine. Shove the bolt into battery, safety lock to the left, and you are ready to fire. At ranges up to 1,000 yards, effective and accurate fire can be produced by this light, handy weapon. You may have seen and handled this pistol. It is the familiar Luger, very popular in the last war. It is still used to a large extent, generally by senior NCOs, platoon commanders, and company commanders. Caliber 35 or 9 millimeter, eight rounds in a magazine. Weight, a little over two pounds loaded. Effective shooting can be done up to 25 yards. The muzzle velocity is 1,040 feet per second. Holding the pistol in firing position, the safety is on the left side, easily operated with the thumb. Push down and to the rear, that exposes the word gesichert, the German way of saying, on safety. Loading and firing, use the same procedure as if handling a Colt 45. Insert a full magazine in the butt and shove home till it clicks. In order to charge the pistol, grasp the two round knobs behind the breech block. Pull up and to the rear. Let go. This operation carries a cartridge from the magazine into the chamber. When the chamber is loaded, the extractor projects above the level of the top surface of the breech block. The word geladen, loaded is exposed on the left side of the extractor. To eject a cartridge, pull the milled knobs of the toggle joint back as far as they will go, like this. Snap the breech back into place. You are ready to fire. The 9mm Parabellum ammunition for the Luger can be American, British, or German make. The MP40, Schmeisser machine pistol a cheaply made equivalent to the U.S. Thompson submachine gun. The Germans developed it for their paratroopers after it had stood tests in the Spanish Civil War. By this time, it has been widely distributed among all combat units of the Army. The principle of operation is known as straight blowback. That is, fired from an open bolt, the pressure in the barrel forces the bolt back, empty cartridge is ejected, the spring then forces the bolt forward, chambering and firing a new round. Firing is full automatic only. The safety is a notch marked S in the cut made for the charging handle. Pull the handle back, then push it up into the notch. 
At best, this is not a reliable safety as a good jolt might easily dislodge it. Sights, two rear sights. One fixed for 100 meters, directly behind it a folding leaf set for 200 meters. Designed for both close and medium range combat, it is equipped with a folding stock. Here is the thumb catch. Press it and the skeleton stock folds back and snaps into position. To load and fire, pull the charging handle back and into the safety notch. A loaded magazine is inserted in the feedway here. It will snap into place. Disengage charging handle from safety notch. You are ready to fire. Notice that the magazine can serve as a grip for steadier operation. The ammunition is standard 9mm or 35 caliber parabellum, which incidentally is used in all German pistols and submachine guns. The potato masher is the grenade that you will find in general use among the Germans. The head consists of a thin iron casing filled with explosive. It is screwed on the wooden handle, through the center of which runs a double length of cord. One end of the cord is attached to a lead ball, which is part of the friction igniter system. At the other end is a porcelain ball, which is exposed by unscrewing the metal cap on the lower end of the handle. Delay fuses are set to four or five seconds. The friction igniter detonator system is charged by putting the detonator into the open end of the delay fuse. The head and handle are then screwed together. When the grenade is armed and you are ready to throw, this porcelain ball is pulled out as far as it will go. In attempting to put these grenades to use, watch out for the common German trick of using them as booby traps. They do this by removing the delay fuse. So make a test of one or even several that you may find. Install it at a safe distance, and remember, its blast is dangerous within 14 yards. Attach a cord to the porcelain ball and pull. If there is a four or five second delay, you know that they are safe for use. The first of the two machine guns to be reviewed in this film is the MG-34. MG stands for machine gewehr, or machine gun. All types of German units are equipped with this flexible all-purpose gun, which is not directly comparable to any US or British weapon. Seen here is the bipod mount, but it can also be used as a heavy machine gun on a special tripod with elaborate sights, or on an anti-aircraft mount. Ammunition? 7.92 millimeter or 31 caliber, same as that used in the infantry carbine 38. Cyclic rate of fire is from 800 to 900 rounds per minute. This belt holds 50 rounds and may be connected with another or in a series of several. Made of non-disintegrating metallic links, refilled many times, the belt feed is still only one of several feed systems with adapters found in use with this gun. Standard sight for use with a bipod mount is the vertical leaf sight with open V-notch. Graduations are from 219 to 2,187 yards. Safety. The small lever on the left side just over the trigger. Remember that when the F is exposed, the gun is in a position to fire. When the S is visible, it means that the weapon is on safety. F for fire, S for safety. Even with the feed cover down, this gun can be loaded conveniently. But in order to better examine the feed system, let us load with the cover raised. We push forward on the cover latch, here on the rear of the cover plate. We see that this gun is left-hand feed. You may also find them with right-hand feed. Allowing two empty links as tabs with which to hold the belt in place, set the first cartridge against the left side of the cartridge holding poles. Close the cover securely. Cock the gun by drawing back on the charging handle, back as far as it will go. Now always remember to return the charging handle to its forward position. Unless this is done, you are in danger of injury to the hands and wrists when the bolt drives forward to engage the first cartridge. Check the safety lever to see if you're ready to fire. The F for fire is revealed. The gun is ready for use. Here is the double trigger. Top triggers for single shot, sometimes used to simulate a lone rifle. The lower position is for full automatic fire. 
After firing from 250 to 300 rounds, a new barrel is installed by a very simple device. The gun is cocked, set on safety, the receiver catch on the left, just below the rear sights, is freed, and the receiver is given a sharp turn counterclockwise. Now the hot barrel will slide out, and a new one can replace it. Though ingenious in design and normally efficient in operation, the German machine guns are not foolproof. They are subject to all the malfunctions usually met with in automatic weapons of any nation. Some experience in overcoming failure to fire or stoppages of various origins, plus a natural curiosity in the mechanical field, should reveal in a short time the most common weaknesses of the German weapons. Over 1,000 rounds per minute. That's a very high cyclic rate of fire. But in this late model machine gun, the 42, the German army have sacrificed a certain amount of accuracy. Intelligence reports have for some time indicated the gradual replacement of the MG-34 by the 42. This has since been confirmed. The later weapon is characterized by the pressed steel jacket. Extensive use of stamped and pressed metal give the receiver and barrel jacket a more rectangular appearance. The sight is different from the 34. It slides on a ramp. The charging handle is larger and grooved to fit the hand. The device for replacing the barrel has been changed. Note the handle on the right side and the improved method of effecting this operation. The special trigger for single shot or semi-automatic fire is absent in the 42. Lastly, a bolt action which has been designed to give a higher rate of fire. Here's a German weapon that should give a good account of itself in Allied hands. It is so similar to the U.S. Army 81 millimeter mortar that anyone familiar with that weapon could, after a little practice, put the German weapon to effective use. A muzzle loader with firing pin at the breech end of the tube, it weighs 125 pounds, throws a seven and three quarter pound shell effectively at from 425 to 1300 yards. For a short period, a firing rate of six rounds in eight or nine seconds can be maintained. For handling and transporting, it is broken down into three parts. Base plate, the tube, and the bipod with transversing, elevating, and cross-leveling mechanisms. Preparing the mortar for action. Set the base plate on the ground. Set the ball-shaped end of the tube into the base plate socket, flat section to the side. Turn the tube in the socket until the spring-actuated bolt is on top. The bipod now goes into position. See that the bipod legs are parallel to the line of the forward edge of the base plate. Now open the mortar barrel clamp. Set the elevation so that one third of the elevating screw shows above its tube and place the barrel inside the clamp between the two position marks. The sight fits on this base. It will generally be a part of captured mortar equipment. Here is the seven and three quarter pound shell, model 34, a conventional type of the percussion fuse. There are four charges giving muzzle velocities of 246, 344, 427, and 499 feet per second. One added precaution should be given. When the shell is dropped into the barrel, all members of the crew should lie flat on the ground. Set in the ball-shaped section of the breech is the safety. When a misfire occurs, press the bolt in and turn in a clockwise direction until the letter S is reached. Loosen the tube clamp, rotate the tube 90 degrees, then tighten the tube clamp. Now gently raise the tube and let the shell slide out into the hand. Instructions for determining the direction of fire, elevation, and making corrections for the 81 millimeter heavy mortar are contained in U.S. Army publications. A few moments spent in studying these instructions might someday repay you a thousandfold. These weapons have been presented as being the ones most likely to be found and put into operation. Now you will hear some of them actually firing. Hearing the report of these guns will probably give you your first clue to their location in the field. 
So your part in this film is to look, to listen, and try to remember.